Church family, how are y'all doing today? God, we, we love you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. So God, as we enter into a time of praise and worship, may our praise ever be on your lips. That God, that you smile because you hear your sons and daughters lifting your name high. Come on, let's turn it up. We're going to sing it out for all the world to hear. Oh, 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 oh. There's life for everyone. A new day has begun. Something to shout about. Let it be known that I got saved. I got rich. We lift you up. stop us now no one can keep us down we found our voice again oh, 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 oh. no need for fear and shame there's power in his name come on let freedom reign. here we go here we go let it be known that i release anything that cost us we lift our name up higher and higher we lift your name up we shout your name out louder and louder we shout it out now come on say it with us we lift your name up higher God, we just, we stand on every promise. To God, everything that you have spoken over us is yes and amen. The God, that you're not a man that you should lie. So God, we cling to the promises of God. And we just say thank you for being so consistent to us. All your promises are yes and amen. All 
all your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. We stand on your word. Every promise you spoke over us. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior.
sing your faithful, say it again, I will. Sing your faithful, say faithful, faithful. Cause we believe that you're faithful. We declare that you're faithful. Cause all your promises. Say all your promises. Real big. Say it one more time. Say all your promises. from religion to relationship. The God, we may know you more intimately. Your thoughts are our thoughts. Your ways are our ways. That God, we do your will. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way.
we surrender ourselves to you. God, we're sorry for doing things our way. But God, here we are, arms open wide for you to receive your love. Here we go. in this moment you see surrender hearts so God we all have things that we have tight fists on whether it's our money whether it's relationships whether it's our job so God we surrender to you God we repent this morning because it was never ours to hold on to it was just ours to steward so God, in this moment, do a new thing in people. That God, this will be the moment that we can look back on and it will be the day of our surrender. So God, take this moment. And God, may it be pleasing to your ear. God, that this moment makes you smile. 
that your sons and your daughters surrender that area to you. So God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. So we are so excited that you're here. We're about to go into a time of meet and greet. So we're going to be careful of the, the wristbands. Red means we're staying away. Yellow means let's just be cautious. Green means let's just come on in. We're about to hug it out. So find your person and we'll be back in a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? If you would make your way back to your seats, I appreciate it. If you did not receive a guide this morning, uh, experience guide, then our ushers would love to bring you one. So they are, uh, looks just like this. So if you didn't get a guide, grab one of these. Let me encourage you, if you don't normally grab a guide, you might want one this morning because there's a little extra something I'm going to talk about in there. So if you need a guide, raise your hand. Uh, it's got sermon notes on there. Uh, in there, if you are a first-time guest, we would love for you to fill out one of our little connection cards that's inside of there. Simple, just name, phone, email, and your date of birth. So quick, quick, and then mark first-time guest. So welcome. Raise your hand. The ushers are bringing those to you now. But uh, I'm really excited because we've got a couple of Really cool things and the big thing I want to talk about uh, in our announcements real quick is tonight is the youth auction everybody listening all right look at your neighbor and say tonight is the youth auction go ahead all right I, I want to make sure you catch this tonight we've got a youth auction five o'clock everybody say five o'clock everybody look at your neighbor and say don't be late okay good five o'clock here's what's happening our youth are going through a series right now about their giftings and using their giftings. They have picked something that they can do and they are auctioning off their time to do that. So it's babysitting or it's housework or all kinds of stuff that they're doing and it's a way for them to use their gifts. But all that money is going to buy Christmas presents for foster kids at Camp Anderson. Uh, right? So, so please get on and check that out tonight, 5 o'clock. It only is going to last about maybe 30 minutes, a little less than that uh, kind of a thing. What they're going to do is there's going to be a video. It's going to tell you what the item is. It's going to go through the item, and then it's going to give you a phone number that you text in, item number five, I bid $400,000. Okay? I don't want to set the bar high. I just am giving an example. All right? Uh, no, but in all seriousness, that you'll bid, and whoever's the highest bidder, uh, we'll get that item. We'll contact you and let you know. So there's all kinds of great items. So 5 o'clock today, what time? 5 o'clock today. And Eden wanted me to remind you, you don't have to bid. You can just give if you would like to give uh, to that fund to help buy Christmas presents for foster kids. So 5 o'clock today, youth auction. Uh, it's going to be a really fun time. They did a great job filming it. It's a lot of fun. I want to tell you something that's coming up, and it's, you're going to be like, why are you talking about that? Because it's a long way away. But just hang with me for a sec. We do something in January called 21 Days of Prayer. And we take the first part of the year and we sort of tithe it to God, if you will. And, and we give it to God and we focus on prayer and fasting. And the reason I'm bringing it up to you now is I really want to encourage everybody to participate in fasting in some way this year. But for some people, you need to prep for that. Like you may, you may need to double check with your doctor. You know, you may need to consider those kind of things. So I want to let you know now prep in your mind for as we get through the holidays and get to the first of the year, that we're going to give God the first of our year through 21 days of prayer and fasting. So prep for that now. Think about that now, what you might want to do. We are beginning to post, and I'm going to post more things on our website that are about fasting and prayer and all that we'll be doing in that. So check that out. And then, of course, I always want to invite you to come to Life Steps, which is right after service, down the hallway in The Rock. If you want to come join us, or you can start the first of next month. We start over the first of every next every first Sunday, and we go four Sundays. So come join us for Life Steps. But I am um, <laughs> I'm so excited about today. Like, there's about... I had to limit, I, I think I probably could talk for about four hours today um, in, in the content of what I want to talk about, because probably there's not a top, every pastor has certain topics, that if you are around that pastor long enough or under that pastor long enough, that you're going to hear this topic come back up because it's their topic. So I purposefully prep a preaching calendar for the year, and I have to tell myself, like, you've hit this a bunch, make sure you talk about other things kind of thing. But can I just be real honest? This is, this is one of those topics for me, okay? This, this, is, this is a topic for me, and the word is legacy. The word is legacy. That, that one day, when Church of the Lakes doesn't exist anymore, 
that there will be fingers of things that would have never been had we not been here meeting in this auditorium. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, that for years to come, and for some of us that grew up in broken families or dysfunctional families like I did, like it's tough because we, we would love to consider maybe even changing the legacy and what our family means, right? You know, I, 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 my kids, uh, being a pastor of kids is tough. I, I agree with that comment sometimes. They live in a fishbowl and that whole thing. And sometimes my kids have always said something like, um, well, you're just worried about what everybody thinks, right? Which sounds like a reasonable argument, which I looked at them and, and said something they didn't expect. I went, yes, I do. And they just stared at me with open mind. And here's why, because the Bible says a reputation is to be prized higher than gold or silver. And the reason that reputation should be prized is because it is your witness. How can you present the greatest message ever if your life presents poop? <laughs> Come on, right? How much credibility do you have? So I want to talk a little bit about legacy for the next two weeks and what I feel like God is leading us to do. We've got some amazing projects that God has put on the horizon for Church of the Lakes uh, that I'm really, really excited about. But let's, let's talk a little bit about this kind of this legacy. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you real quick one of the things what I wanted you to see in here is there's an extra piece of paper in here and it says legacy report on it. So it says 2019-2020 legacy report. And one of the numbers on here I just want to show you is 31 salvations. Now, okay, so two people are excited. That's awesome. The rest of y'all, the rest of y'all are going to get saved at the end of service. It's going to be awesome. But no, but hear me, hear me out on this, right? 31, and, and, and I want you to know we're pretty stingy with that. And what I mean by that is we don't just count a raised hand, you know, or just to every time somebody, you know, flinches. Ooh, I think that person moved, so we'll check them. I mean, like these are ones that we've turned around and had conversations with and all this. Listen to me. Because you have been a part of Church of the Lakes, 31 people's lives, their eternity has been changed. That's, that's a moment. You, you understand? 54 people baptized. Check this out. Do you know that this year in the 2020 crazy COVID year um, that we have had like 55 new members come to Church of the Lakes? People have gone through life steps and become part of the church. And, and I, I mean, so, so God is doing some, some pretty cool and amazing things. Down at the bottom, you can see the amount of money that's been given away for a three-year-old church. Uh, we're creeping up on. And uh, after when I finish today, we're going to talk about a big thing that we're doing to try to give for 2021, if we can accomplish it, this church will have given away a half a million dollars in three years of existence, right? And listen to me, we're not looking for a building and we're not looking for a piece of property. Like I had somebody new that was here this morning, I was walking her around and she was like, so y'all got to set up and tear down every week? She was like, oh, and I was like, no, 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 it's great. All right? Be because listen, to understand the vision of what's going on here. It's not about our comfort and it's not about creating a place for us. The church is not for church people. The church is to reach the lost. The church is for the community. The church is for us to reach out. That's, that's legacy, all right? So I want to talk legacy today. Look at this verse in Psalm 112, 5 and 6. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely who conduct their affairs with justice. There's a good reputation and a good name lined in there. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. I think that's a hard verse for us to swallow. Because you go, well, I feel sh shaken sometimes, right? Listen to me. The promise of that is not that there will not be shaking around you. It's that when you're standing on the promises of God that are yes and amen that we spoke about this morning, that you will not be shaken. That you stand firm in the midst of the storm around you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, like in the midst of all this madness of politics, like we should be a steady, firm foundation for somebody to come to and we're reasonable in our conversation. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Be because we're a steady, like I've said this before and, and I'll say it again, listen to me, I have very specific pol political views and, and all that kind of stuff. But here's what I need you to hear. Jesus was always in the middle. He was always reaching his hand to both sides. He was in the middle cross between two people. One hated him and one loved him. He sits on the throne at the right hand of God between a sinner and a heavenly father who is holy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like we're called to do something. And when we are standing firm and walking with him, we won't be shaken, even though everything around us is shaking. Right? That's, that's what that verse says. And then it says, they will be remembered 
forever. Legacy. Here's some fill-ins in your notes. Legacy. Where my life lives on, right? Where my life lives on. Another way I thought of saying it is giving to something that will outlast or outlive me or living so that my life outlives me. Uh, it, was, it was cool. He didn't even know I'm going to say this, but it was, it was really cool. I was on social media and uh, Luke Fries is one of our football coaches here. He's here this morning. And I noticed that uh, Coach Nassar, who used to be the coach years ago, made a comment about Luke's family portrait. And then I saw Luke posted, um, because you made me the man that I am. And he gave that honor back to his old football coach. And I saw that moment, and I was like, that, that's what we're talking about here. Like, that's, that's who we're supposed to be as God's people, right? Leaving, leaving a trail behind us. Not a trail of mess. <laughs> Not a trail of dysfunction and broken relationships. But, but a trail behind us where people are like, man, I wish they were still here because of what they brought and what they did. That's, that's, that's legacy. And, and can I say this to you? This is the best way to deal with problems in your life. Because how many of you know you're going to have problems, right? Like problems are inevitable, yes? Like every day Jesus said, you're going to have problems. Like, like guess what? Hey, guys, this week you're going to have a bunch of cockapoo tt happen. To which those of you who are your first time here like, well, gosh, you're, you're kind of negative. Why don't you be more positive? Okay, I'm positive you're going to have cockapoo titi this week. <laughs> Jesus said you're going to have trouble in this world, right? You're going to have problems. But I have over, well, how do you overcome them? You know what you do? You focus on something outside of your own problems, and somehow it changes your problems. Are you hearing me? Like when I have issues and I go serve someone else who's in need or hurting, it seems to do something to soothe my soul at the same time. Are you tracking with me? As a matter of fact, I've referred to it many, many times, but Mavlov is, is a, a, was a scientist and he came up with Mavlov's hierarchy of needs, right? So if you study in school, psychology, or if you get into sociology class, there's a basic needs of man that Mavlov came up with. Now, this is not Christian based. It's not biblical. This is secular scientists. But I want to show you, because this is Mavlov's hierarchy of needs, is actually on this. You got that triangle for me? Maybe not. All right, so I'm going to tell you about it. What happened to our triangle? She doesn't know. She's going like this. Anyway, so, hey, uh, close your eyes and picture. No, there's a triangle, all right? And what happens is they, they label needs, the basic needs of man. And the, at the very top is the top of our needs, and across the top of that, it says transcendence, transcendence. And transcendence means living for something bigger than myself. You ever had that feeling? There's got to be more to life than this. You ever had that feeling like you're going through the day to day, like it's like Groundhog Day, the movie, <laughs> over and over, and you're like, really? Like, there's got to be more, and it's transcendence. And it's not, not become, because some secular scientist came up with it. It's because God of the universe who created you in his image put something in you. And regardless of whether you know him today and are serving him today or not, that thing, that image of him is in you crying for, listen to me, something more. Something bigger. Something greater. See, the goal isn't just to live on earth here forever. The goal is to do something that does live on forever, right? It's, it's, it's to make such a difference in such a way. So I want, you, I want to read you this, uh, Romans 14 and 10. Look at this. You then, why do you judge your brother and sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. Check this out. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. One day, every man, woman, and child is going to stand before God, right, and give an account for law. In other words, let me say it to you this way. There's going to be a final exam in heaven. Where are my bad test takers? Do I have people who are just are bad? Like, there's a whole row of students that just raised their hand right over there, right? Where, where are my people that you didn't study and you, like, just ripped off an A? Raise your hand. Yeah, we don't like y'all. We don't like y'all at all breaking the curve. Why don't you just stay home one day? <laughs> All right? 
right? But, but, but listen, there, there's going to be a final exam in heaven. Now, here's an interesting thing. I was a eh, test taker, and then all of a sudden there was a point in my college career when I became a better test taker. You want to hear the difference? You want to hear what happened? I joined a fraternity. And in the basement of our fraternity, there were two filing cabinets. And in those filing cabinets, every time you took a test and they gave it back, you would take it down to the filing cabinet and file it under that professor's name. <laughs> so that the next semester, the next generation, so to speak, could come behind you and find, oh, Jones Biology. Sweet, here's the test I'm about to take. I became a great test taker. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Like just all of a sudden, right? But, but here's, so here's what I want to do. I want to do the same thing for you today. I want to I open the filing cabinet today because here's what I want to say to you. There are two final exam questions when you get to heaven. There's two. Today I'm going to tell you what they are and I'm going to give you the answers. How about that? Right? So, so, so let's talk about the two final exam questions and exactly what that is because here's what I know. My job as a pastor is kind of like, I'm like a spiritual tour guide. Like my job is to guide you in this life but also to guide you in the life to come, towards the life to come in what we do. So, so what are the questions? Question number one, here it is. What did you do with my son Jesus? What did you do with my son Jesus? Let me say this to you right off the bat, because one of the areas that people today get kind of jacked up is this concept of hell. And I need you to hear something very clearly about this. There is a heaven and there is a hell. But hell is not a place that God created for people. Right? He's not a big, ugly, mean Zeus God with a lightning bolt sitting up there going, go ahead, blow it again. Do it, punk, and see if I don't send you to hell. That's not who our God is. Listen to me. God prepared hell for Satan. And all those who follow Satan will follow him into eternity into hell. Are you, are you, hearing, are you tracking with me? And so what happened was when we fell in the garden and sinful nature became a part of us, we follow the ways of this world. In other words, we follow the ways of the devil. When we are, come on, you can see it in a small child. Anybody have small children? Did you teach them how to say, mine? <laughs> Nobody teaches a child how to do that. It's a sinful nature that's already in you, right? You ever seen a mom in aisle three in Walmart going, look, lay on your back and kick your feet and scream at the top of your lungs just like this. You don't teach a child that. That sinful nature is inside of it. Listen to me. So we're born with a sinful nature, already following the ways of the world. And, and, and what God says is, look, I don't want anybody to go to hell. That's, that was never my goal in the first place. That was the place for Satan. But if you would choose to pay for your own sins, you can make that choice. But I sent Jesus, my son, as an option that if you will give this life to him, if you will turn over the reins and control of this life, then in eternity, you could be in heaven with me forever. That's, 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 that's the reality of, of this. Listen, listen to Revelation. Let me, let me give you a clearer picture. Revelation 20 says this. This is a picture of what happens when you go to stand before God in this kind of final exam time. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence. There was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. I got like this, um, like standing in the deli, you know, now serving number 47 picture in my head. You know what I mean? Of all the people kind of standing. Great and small, standing before the throne. And books, catch this, books were opened. Another book was opened which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what had been done and recorded in the books. So there were books. There were some books that, that come out. And these books are everything that I've done wrong. Now, this is a very small portion of what Mike's books are going to look like. Like I have a picture of as soon as they're like, okay, Matheny, Edwin Michael Matheny, step forward. And I step up, you're going to hear boo. Boo, boo, because the truck's going to be backing up <laughs> with the books, right? <laughs> but I just brought a few, like, like I kind of was like, you know, this is probably like my childhood, like every time I was like, no, and you know, snotty and all, and so you can look through and see all the things you've done, and there's a few others. This big one, this is like the two years of living in a fraternity, 
and there ain't no way I would read you anything out of this. <laughs> but here's what's amazing. It says in there, there's another book. There's another book, right? And they're going to open the other book. And this is the Lamb's Book of Life. And this is going to be whether how you answered that first question, what did you do with my son Jesus? And they're going to open that book and they're going to look at the M's. Where are the M's? M's. Good. Good. Yeah. Edwin Michael Matheny. If you didn't know, my first name is Edwin. That's a new one for you. So Edwin Michael Matheny, there he is. Yeah, he's good. And they're going to look back at these books and they're going to be empty. Because your name is in the book of life. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Like that, that's, that's, that's the first part. It's what did you do with my son? And we've been talking for six weeks about the reality of what relationship with Jesus is and not religion, right? It's not going to be did you go to church? It's not going to be did you give enough money? Did you go to Sunday school? Were you a good person? Because how many of you know there's really no such thing as a good person? We, we like to say that. We like to fool ourselves and go, oh, they're, they're pretty good people or I'm pretty good people. And that's a deception because every one of us have lied. Every one of us have cheated and fudged things in our life, done things that we're not proud of. But we have a God who loves us so much that he would send his son. So grace, grace comes. Nothing you can do to earn it. All you do is this. Listen to me, you take this life and you surrender it to Jesus. And you do what he says, the way he says, when he says. And when you do that, your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And all of your sins are taken, and they say, come on in. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So the answer, listen, the question is, what, do, what did you do with my son? And the answer on that exam is this. I knew him personally. I had a relationship with him. I spent time with him, getting to know him, and doing what he told me to do. A personal relationship with Jesus. Now listen to me, it's important for us to understand this word no. It's not no of. Are you hearing me? It, 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 it's not, well I sat in church every day and listened to a pastor who knew him so like, do I get to skate in kind of? A, no. It's that you, you know him. How do I know this? Listen to this verse. This verse is probably the most haunting verse in the entire Bible. These, these three verses, Matthew 7 and 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my father. How, how do you know what God's will is or what God wants? if you don't have enough relationship with him to listen to him, right? It, it requires re relationship. Many will say to me on that day, that word many is brutal. Come on, y'all. There's a whole crowd and many in the crowd will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and, and, and drive out demons? And didn't, God, didn't I go to church every week? And didn't I give? And, and didn't I make one of them shoe boxes every Christmas? Right? Did, did, I, did I do all these things? We perform many miracles. And then I will tell them plainly, listen, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Listen to me for a moment, church. I, I, I got to look at you in the eye today. And my heart was pounding this week. Thinking of some of us that might think that we have this thing with God sorted out. And maybe we might be in those people. So can I ask you this morning, it's not a guilt thing, it's not a scare tactic, it's just my heart to yours. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you know him? Do you spend time with him? Do you work on listening to his voice and reading his word? Because that's what, that's what the final exam, that's the first question on the exam is going to be all about. And Lord, I, I want to be number 47 when you're number 44. And they open the book and they go, yep, there he is. Take the truck away. All the books are gone. So I want to encourage you today. We're going we're gonna to pray at the end of today. 
And if, and if you listen to me, there is nothing, there is nothing about a, a sinner's prayer in the Bible. Did you know that? That's not, that's not in the Bible. It's, it's not about a prayer. It's not about the fact that you might go today and pray with one of our prayer team. And just because you prayed a prayer, woo, I got my Willy Wonka ticket to heaven. That's not how it works. Right? You don't, you don't get a golden ticket. No, 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 no. Listen to me. If you surrender this life, it's a surrender thing. You only pray that prayer as a beginning step to developing a relationship and living out who Jesus has called you to be. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? And man, I just, I want to encourage you today. I, I don't care if you're one of our seniors and you've been in church all your life. If, if there's any doubt whatsoever in your mind today, would you consider praying with one of our prayer team today? And, 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 and restart. If it's a restart, recommit your life today. Because there's, there's a final exam coming. Are y'all you, are you hearing me? And man, I want to see them empty the books out of your life. First part of the exam of the judgment, listen to me, it determines your place in eternity. The second part of the exam is about what we do here on earth. Here's the question. Question number two on the exam. What did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with what I gave you? gave you. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. In other words, listen to me. The amazing news for those who do have a personal relationship with Jesus and your name is in the book, all the bad, guess what happens? Gone. But then the second judgment, he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And he's going to bring out things that you did do, works that you did do. For those that say, oh, Christianity is not a works religion. You just got to pray a prayer and then you're good. That's not true. It's a relationship that is lived out every day. And we turn around now and we serve him through what we do and how we take care of the people around us and what he calls us to do. Are you hearing me? Everything you have is his. Jesus is going to pay you back for what you do in this life. So any moment that you think, well, man, I, I wish I could go do that. And your sinful nature is aching for some fun of this world. Listen to me. Jesus is going to pay that back over and over again. But you know the difference is? You get that payback for eternity as opposed to just 80 years. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Every sacrifice is more than worth it. Listen, Matthew 16 and 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. I used to have this big old Suburban, um, this big honking Suburban. We called it Tank. I drove it till it had like 278,000 miles or something started falling apart. But I remember somebody one time, I was, um, I was a youth pastor at the time, and I mean, I had kids in that thing all the time, right? And no, there was not enough seat belts for the number of kids that were in the truck. But anyway, but, but we would take on trips and we would go to acquire the fire events and all these kind of events. And I remember a guy one time pulling me aside and he meant well. He really was not being ugly, but he meant well. But he's like, Pastor Mike, you're always using your Suburban for church stuff and carrying those kids around. You're wearing your tires out. You're putting too many miles on that. You need to be thinking about, you know, taking care of that for the future of your family and all this kind of stuff. And I knew he meant well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But what went through my head was, why do I have it then? Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And I, I want to say this to you. Why do, why do you have your house? Well, because I bought it. How'd you buy it? Well, because I got a job. Well, how'd you get that job? Because I went to school and I did this. Really, who gave you the talent and the personality to do all of those things? Listen to me. Everything we have is God's everything, only because he's allowed you to have that house, only because he's allowed you to be in that neighborhood, only because he's allowed you to be in that place. We're not owners. We're stewards. Marcus said it earlier. Are you hearing me? Everything that you have, he wants you to, he wants you to pour it out because guess what? In eternity, he's going to reward you. And we lose vision. We lose vision because we get so fixed on this world. And we get so fixed on the bank account and the 401k and the retirement plan and our quality of life. 
that we lose vision and we don't, and here's the title of today's message, focused on eternity. We don't stay focused on the reality that we only have about 70 or 80 years here. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? And then it's eternity. That it's eternity in that place. And so, so, so what are you going to do with, with what I gave you? The answer is this. I gave my life away. I, I, gave, I gave it all away. I served. When people looked at me and went, you're tearing up your suburban. I, I, I opened up my home and, and had kids in my home all the time, even though, yeah, my carpets look like heck because of the dirt and the, you know, I mean, are, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Like God's people, we, we need to stay focused on the reality that in a very short amount of time, man, I turned, in February, I turned 51. Isn't that crazy? So it hit me. Like, I have less years left to live than I've already lived. That's a little sobering thought, right? And so what if, I don't know, what if Mike kicked the bucket next year? And I stood before God, and they pull out the books, and, I, and I'm praying and hoping that I've got this thing right. I, I think I do. I think I'm good with the personal relationship, and Jesus and I are pretty good. And so my name will be in that book. But then I'm thinking about when they bring out the other books, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, I want it to say things like The Rock in my book. <laughs> are you hearing me? Like, I want it to say, like, teens, I want it to say 31 people saved in the last two years. Like, I, I wanted to talk about, because those are the things, listen to me, those are the things that are going to matter. Right? That is what's going to matter when we're focused on eternity. Look at, look at Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He will make everything beautiful in its time. That's a word if you're in the middle of a mess right now. Anybody think of something that is a mess in your life right now or kind of dark in your life right now? Get it in your head. You got it? It doesn't take long, does it? Now let me read this verse. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Like that's, that's who our God is. That's what he does when we stay eternally focused. He is also set in eternity in the human heart. It is in you. You know it's transcendence. It's something bigger or more that God is calling us to do. And what is it? And it only is going to get answered when we're in relationship with him. Right? When we're in his word and when we're hearing his Holy Spirit speak to us and say to do crazy things. Listen, I challenge you not only to make sure that relationship is there, but then every morning, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? And then hush hush, turn off the radio, right? What do you want me to do? Who, who do you want me to call? It? And it may be the craziest, weirdest thing. Listen to me, do it. I've done some of the dumbest things in my life because I thought God told me to do it and he didn't. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But do you know what happens in that moment? Our heavenly father giggles because he sees your heart. <laughs> no, I didn't tell you to do that, but you're trying so hard to listen. That's so cool. Are you hearing me? Like, that's, that's the heart of who our God is when we're focused. So, so I want to give you three points to end today in, in, in the concept today because my job is to prep you here and guide you in this life, but then to prep you for eternity, right? And, and, and to prep you for that place. So I want to give you three things that I think we can practically put into place. I always try to give you kind of theology up front and then end with practical, something you can put in play tomorrow morning, tonight, whatever. So here's... So, so what can we do now that will help prep us for this exam? We know the questions and we know the answers. Problem is the answers have to be actually lived out, right? Number one, I will intentionally give what I have. I will intentionally give what I have. Now, in that moment, what happens with most of us is we go, well, I don't, I don't have very much, right? Come on, we, we are poor mouthers, right? It's, a, it's a funny because we're the richest country in the world, and yet we're huge poor mouthers. Anybody poor mouth? Come on, be honest. I don't have as much as them, and I, well, I'm not rich. Listen to me. We hate this statistic, and yet it's real. The poorest person in this room is in the top 1% of the world. You don't have anything? Let me ask you this. You got thumbs? Anybody got any thumbs? You got thumbs? 
How about you send somebody an encouraging text message? Well, I don't, I don't have anything. Really? Okay. You got social media? How about you use it for positive and stop writing cockapoo-poo? Come on, listen. Listen, stop talking about what you're against and start talking about what you're for. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, like let's, let, let's, let's, let's stop just battling with people and give people concepts that maybe, maybe might actually change their mind as opposed to just war with them, right? Like, use, use it differently. Where do you invest your time? No, I don't, I don't have any time. I don't have any time whatsoever. You know why you don't have any time? Because you're chasing your tail, striving. Come on, let's be honest for just a moment. Because I'm, I got, because I feel like I got to have my kids in soccer, and they got to do this, and they got to be in Cub Scouts, and I got to do. And they, we get, <laughs> Come on, uh, something weird in our culture that busyness is like a trophy, right? Isn't that, isn't that true? Like when you say to somebody, "So what have you been doing?" Oh man, I'm so busy. I was just busy, busy, busy. And yet, if you walked up to somebody and said, "So what have you been doing?" nothing come on what's the first start in your head loser get a life like there's something inside of it listen to me busy is not good all the time so so if you don't have time listen to me to do the things that are of God or of his church or of his people then you need to quit some things I don't know how else to say that to you. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like we need to intentionally begin to give. And I'm not just talking about dollars. I'm talking about of our talents. I don't have any talents. I can't, I can't do anything. Well, you walked your butt up in here this morning. Why can't you walk your butt across the street with your neighbor and take him some cookies? Come on. Like we're full of excuses. But I want you to understand like this is, this is necessity. For us to understand that we are in the process of setting up what we are going to live out in eternity. And so we need to be intentional about what we give and what we do. Let me just tell you real quick, The Rock. There have been 300 check-ins already this year into The Rock. For those of you who are new to the church and don't know, we have set up a benevolent center in the middle of Leesburg High School run by churches. <laughs> <laughs> That's just crazy. You ready for this? Um, there's, a, there's a rock getting set up in Umatilla High School. There's a new rock going up. I had a guy call me from Winter Park, and the youth pastor wants to come over and see what we're doing at the rock because they want to see if it's something they can do over in Orlando or make happen in Orlando, right? So let me tell you a quick story about the rock. Talk about investing your time. So every one of you that painted a wall or brought a supply or has spent any kind of time in the rock, guess what? This goes in your book. The story I'm about to tell you, it goes in your book. You ready? There was a kid, like 4.2 grade point average. He's in the Cambridge ACE program, like killer student. But the quarantine happened. When the quarantine, when they came back, he didn't come back. Trying to figure out what's going on, finally they talked to the mom. The kid has fallen into like depression and anxiety. And so he's home, kind of locked himself away because of all that's going on. So Lori in The Rock figures this out. They have a conversation. She figures out the girlfriend is still coming to school. She calls the girlfriend into The Rock and says, hey, tell me what's going on with so-and-so. Little girl just bursts into tears. She's like, what, honey? She's like, I don't, I don't know how to help him. He gets up. Sometimes he takes a shower and gets dressed, but he can't make himself leave the room to go get on the bus because he's in this dark place, because he's in this place of depression. What they didn't know was Lori... She's dealt with depression and anxiety all her life and even taken medication for it. So she tells the little girl, hey, do me a favor. If you can just convince him at all, could you get him to come here tomorrow morning? Just come to the rock. He doesn't have to go to class. I don't care if he stays here all day long and sits in the rock. He doesn't have to go. To, just see if you, and she's like, I don't know. The next morning, knock on the door. And there they are standing there, the girlfriend and the boyfriend. Lori said he looked like a homeless person. He had not gotten dressed, hair was a mess, had like sweatpants with holes in it, dirty shirt. Comes in, sits down on the couch. She says, honey, tell me what's going on. And he said, I, I don't really know. And she said, well, listen, let me tell you my story. And she starts telling her battle. And in the middle of her telling the battle, he stopped her and he goes, you know, I just, I just feel like crying. And she said, I get it. Like, it's, it's okay to cry if you need to cry. And he said, no, 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 I, I feel like crying 
because you described what I've been going through, but I didn't think anybody else would understand. And she said, baby, millions of people deal with exactly what you're talking about. There's tons of us that deal with this scenario. Called the guidance counselor. The guidance counselor came down to the rock. They looked at his schedule. The biggest thing that was stressing him out was he was in algebra, AP Algebra 2 or some crazy. I don't know why people take that stuff. All you, all you great test takers. But, but what he was stressed out about was not being able to catch up. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like with that? And then he wasn't going to get that. And then he wasn't going to be able to graduate on time. And so in his mind, like his life was over, right? Because he wasn't going to be able to do what he felt like he was supposed to do in time and all this sort of stuff. L L L Lori brought in the guidance counselor. They redid his schedule, gave him a different math, talked to the teacher that he could get caught up. She made him his, uh, his t her teaching assistant in the rock first period. So they gave him a buffer. He could come to the rock first, which is a quiet, peaceful place, settle into the day, right? Then they got his foreign language on Florida virtual so he could do that class in the rock second period. Then they got him into the other class and, and the other that he was gone. Lori said the very next morning, knock on the door, shows up, opens the door, brand new shirt, tucked in, nice pants, dress shoes, combed hair. And this week there was a kid in class because of what you do. Are you hearing me? Every time you paint a wall, <laughs> not to be weird, but every time you show up with some toothpaste, right? Or some tampons or something, right? Like the stuff that we give away in the rock. Listen to me. You have a part in that story. That's what it means to intentionally give. That's, that's who we should be as God's people. So I want to show you what we're doing already because it's so critical. On the back of this legacy report, on the top of this page, I want to remind everybody what we do in missions. Why are we setting up and taking down every week? Because we want to give more away instead of spending it on buildings and sticks and bricks and fixing air conditioning units, right? So, so at the top of the page, that's our missions. That's where your money goes every month. Listen to me. Every month you're launching churches because we give money to ARC. Every month there are kids that are getting to hear the difference of what it means to live a life of abstinence. You can't say that word in school anymore. You have to say risk avoidance. But it's abstinence. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Why? Because we give and so we do that. So that's where your tithe goes in that place. But here's what I'm going to say to you and here's where the challenge comes. Once a year I talk about money. This is the two weeks I talk about money. So if it's your first week here, welcome. You'll have another 10 months where you won't hear me talk about money, okay? But here's why. Because we don't need money to build a building. We don't need money for Church of the Lakes. We need money to make a difference in this community. So we have set up projects that are above and beyond that we want to do in this community. Let me give you an idea of one. It's an idea I've got. The, the Leesburg Booster Club has called me and asked me to come speak to them because they heard about this idea. Next year is going to be the issue when it comes to athletics. Because this year, there's not enough people attending because of COVID, so they're not getting ticket sales. The lack of ticket sales means they won't have money for equipment next year. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So next year, they're talking about the possibility of it being pay to play. You want to play football? No problem. It's $300. What is that going to do to our community? Like, what is that going to do to some of, right? So we are working on putting together a fund that is called Student Activity Scholarship Fund that we would take a day, bring kids in, and we're not just going to hand them money. They're going to go through a whole process of learning what it means to go through a job interview, look somebody in the eye, firm handshake, don't give me that floppy fish, poo-poo, <laughs> right? Kind of, and, and, but use it as a training day in the process of while sponsoring. That's one of the projects that we'd like to do. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Over the next two weeks, I'm going to roll out a video with each one of these like really hardcore on what they are and what you understand. I want you to begin to pray and ask God about us doing a legacy offering on the fifth Sunday of this month. This is above and beyond our ties. It's an amount of money Jen and I are already praying about, like what will we give that's sacrificial? That is, and here's what the deal is. You can decide what fund it goes to. So, so you've got the choice. I'm going to explain all these to you in weeks to come. I just wanted to introduce it so you could begin praying now. Does that make sense? Listen to me. We need to get intentional about what we're doing. We need to be intentional about where we're putting our money and what we're doing. You are 
rich. 2 Corinthians 9 and 11. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So I, wanna, I just really want to encourage you to do that. Number two, and then we're closing. Number two, I will intentionally serve others. So let me ask you, where are you serving? The band's going to come and close this out, so don't let that distract you. But where are you serving others? Now listen to me. If you're new to Church of the Lakes, we're glad you're here. You are welcome to sit for a while and catch your breath. Coming from a rough situation, coming from a church split, maybe you've never been in church, and you just need to hang for a while, that's awesome. Um, we kind of, <laughs> I kind of make the joke, we kind of have that section in the back, and we leave the lights dark, so you can just sit back there and hide for a while if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of a deal, and, and, and I mean that, and I don't mean disrespectful to anybody's social distancing, but, but in all reality, if that's you, but after a while, listen to me, Church of the Lakes doesn't need you to serve. You need to serve. Transcendence. Are you hearing me? You need to be in a place where you're on a team doing something bigger than yourself. And it's got to be intentional, right? It, it, it has to be something that you specifically or intentionally do. So let me challenge and encourage you. Next month in December, come to Life Steps and hear about what's going on here and how you can get plugged in. Whether it's on our dream team and helping with parking children, whatever, all that. Listen, let me tell you about the Thrive Center. Do you know at the Thrive Center, in COVID with all this craziness, it was slow starting, but we have had 51 kids who are not Church of the Lakes teenagers that have checked in at the center. 51 teenagers, right? We're sitting there the other afternoon. I was about to close it down because nobody's there. And here comes Autumn. And Autumn brings, and I don't even remember the kid's name, but it was a brand new kid. Had his big skateboard. He walked in and went, whoa. I love that reaction. But listen, a safe place that's going, I mean, maybe it's the Thrive Center helping there. But listen, you, you, you need to be intentional about this scenario. We need to, as we get into 2021, it's a new world. Would you agree? Like, like things are never going to be quite the same, right? And, and depending on, good Lord, depending on where this election goes, could be a really different world in a lot of different ways. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So the church, we better get focused, right? In being intentional about the way we give, intentional about the way we serve. Look at Matthew 20 and 26. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life away as a ransom for many. Number three, and I'm going to close. I'll be intentional in sharing Jesus. That waitress today at Oakwood, she needs Jesus. She would love a big tip, but she needs Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That neighbor who you would like to punch in the face doesn't need to get their mind straight. They need Jesus. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Like, how are we intentionally explaining to people? And listen to me. You don't have to have a theology degree. You just need to tell your story. You just need to say, when they start saying, well, what about this? And science says that. And blah, blah, blah. Look at them and go, I don't know. Those are phenomenal questions. But let me just tell you what Jesus has done in my life. Because they can't argue with your story. Right? That you would intentionally say, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I got a million questions too. You should come to church. I got just as many questions as you do. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? That we would intentionally say, God is who he is. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. We are Christ's ambassador. God is making his appeal through us. That's a little scary, isn't it? When you think about it. Right? Like, like God's plan for this world. You ready? It's you. You're plan A and there is no plan B. And for most of us, that makes us sweat a little bit. 
because they're like, me? I, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what to say. I don't, listen to me. Do you have thumbs? Send them a encouraging text. Did you walk in here, walk across the street and say, hey, can I help you with your lawn? You're cleaning up the pine trees in your yard or whatever. Are you, are you, are you hearing? Like that's what Jesus did over and over. He served physical needs. And this amazing thing happened. And God gave us this phrase, and we've been using it since we launched the church. Listen to me. Wonder precedes the word. If you do things that make people go, what, huh? Why are you, why are you doing that? When you make people wonder, it opens up the opportunity for say, well, let me tell you about God. Like, I don't know all the answers. And if you ask me a bunch of crazy doctrinal questions, I don't know, but here's my story and here's what Jesus has done in my life. I think he probably could do the same for you. You should come check it out. Like that we would just be intentional and kind with our story. Are you guys hearing me? Because everybody is going to have that final exam. Everybody is going to have those two questions asked. What'd you do with my son? And it requires a personal relationship with him. And then what did you do with what I gave you? I stewarded it in such a way that it brought you glory as much as completely and totally possible. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So I want to encourage you today. We're going to re-sing in just a minute the song, I Surrender. And I want you to take it as a moment. For some of you, it is your very first time maybe that you're going to say, you know what, I, I hear this differently. And today, I need to surrender this life because I want my name in the book, right? And I, and, and I want to live out eternity with him. For some of you, it's just going to be, I've been doing this for a long time, and maybe I've gotten off track, and maybe I've gotten out of focus in certain areas of the way we're doing things, or the way our house is running, or the way that, our, the way, the way that we're training our kids. You know, you can make your kids phenomenally successful in the world and stink at being a follower of Jesus. Are you hearing me? So what is that for you? Like, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? What is, what is it right now? If, if you just kind of stop for a second and, and check your own heart, what is it that you need to surrender today? What is it that you need to intentionally do, whether it be giving, serving, or sharing, that preps for the final exam one day? And as the Bible says, lays up treasures in heaven, right? Not just for some retirement where I play pickleball all the time, right? So let's do this. Stand to your feet. We're going to sing this song. And we're going to use this song as, like I said, it's an, it's an invitation for you in this moment. What is it that you need to surrender? And as you sing these words... Would you surrender to God, whatever that is today?
church, we have a prayer team over here on the side. If you need to pray with somebody this morning, they would love to pray with you. But let me challenge you, don't walk out of today without taking a next step. What is it that you need to be intentional about as we live out what we know of eternity? Band's going to keep worshiping and or I'll see you in life steps. Others of you, have a great week. You're dismissed. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathes.